Hi, it's Wesley with 20 Cuisines. Oh. <laughs> Fucking table just like scooched out of me. Hi, it's Wesley with 20 Cuisines, and I'm doing a VR to an oldie but a goodie hashtag from the TarotTube community called uh, hashtag favorite card backs. And this was from a video that Boy Diviner made uh, like two years ago, <laughs> and Laura recently put up a VR Laura at um, Aquamarine 18 Tarot and Books did a uh, two-year-old VR, and so now I am going to do my own two-year-old VR. Uh, so the idea is that you go through your tarot decks and you highlight your favorite designs on the backs of the cards. And I'm going to go through some of my favorites here in no particular order, and then as a bonus, I have a couple of my least favorite back designs. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we'll just get started. Again, in no particular order. We're going to start with the Inversion Tarot, which is this little tarot in a tin, um, pip style, sort of Marseille, I guess it's Marseille inspired, because I think that Marseille is like a kind of a strict tradition in terms of what's called Marseille. I don't know that much about it, but um, this is the card back design. And I really, really like it um, because of probably a very personal association. It reminds me so much of these pillows that, um, <laughs> these pillows that I had when we were growing up, which was a sort of a similar uh, style in that it was black and white or, or white on black. It was sort of a geometric design. Um, but it was hand-drawn, and you have that here, where it's geometric shapes, you know, it's squares, but they're hand-drawn, and so they're all a little bit imperfect, and, uh, you know, they, they're more like rectangles than true squares. <laughs> um, and it still has the repeating, um, you know, it, it, it still repeats, it's still ve very geometric, but it just has that little, like, extra extra quality, I guess, from it being hand-drawn. I just, I really, really like it. Um, this sort of, uh, the pillow that we had actually didn't look all that much like this, <laughs> um, but it was sort of done in a similar style where it was like a hand-drawn kind of um, geometric armadillo shape that was repeating. Um, so it doesn't really make any sense, but for whatever reason, that's a very strong association for me, and so it makes me really like this deck. Um, and then just to go through the fronts of the cards real quick, I'm not sure what the best way to do this. Laura, how the hell did you do this? Um, the idea of the inversion tarot is it's, it's like, um, it's, it's the classic lines from, uh, an artist in the 60s who did a Marseille style deck except this one it's been slightly edited and adjusted and it's um done so it's white on black instead of black on white and so it's really I don't know it just it just feels like it makes it so much more interesting just through that very simple thing it's Marseille so it's kind of pip style um let's like here's the sword just trying to get to like some that might be seen as slightly more interesting <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just think, I think it goes very well with the backs as well, and, um, and it's just, it's so pretty. So <laughs> that's one of my favorites. I got this deck entirely on impulse, where I was just, um, going around a metaphysical shop in my area and just got it because it was like, ah, eh, it looks cool, and nowhere on the back, um, or on the box or anything does it have anything to suggest the card backs, but then as soon as I opened it up and I saw the card backs and I, it just like brought me straight back to those, those couch pillows that we had, I just completely fell in love with it and it just, you know, fills me right up. So that's the Inversion Tarot. Really like those card backs. All right, the next one that I have is the Goblins and Gardens Tarot deck, and I know that I talked about the backs of these in my uh, Goth as Fuck Tarot deck video. Um, because they are so cool. <laughs> Here are the backs. And I really, really like these. Basically, these this is sort of like a collage of a bunch of um, strips from maps, like um, topographical maps um, that have been cut out and arranged just in this really cool <laughs> way. So it's not, it's not like perfectly symmetrical, but it's kind of 
you know, basically symmetrical, I guess I would call it. Um, in that you can see that the colors mirror each other, like or like the the map that they cut them from mirrors each other. I think it might be, I don't, maybe it is reversible. I don't know. I can't, I'm not going to go through and count every one of these dots. I, I guess it's not because this set of dots is, there's more on that side. Oh God. It's like one of those, <laughs> one of those spot the difference things, but on hard mode. Anyway, so I really like this and I like this for a lot of reasons. Um, I guess I'll show you some of the fronts as I'm talking here. If I can once again, figure out the best way to do this where, um, basically this deck is sort of a collage of, um, old mo RPG monsters and, uh, garden photography, which <laughs> is such a specific combination, but I just really like it. It's really neat. Um, and so what I like about the, the card backs here is that I feel like they, um, they kind of invoke what you, um, Okay, here's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like back in the day in old RPGs when you would draw your maps on graph paper um, because obviously these are all gridded uh, maps and so it just, it's like, it just, it reminds me of that but it's still colorful and collage -y. Like it, it, it incorporates the collage elements so it, it fits very well with the front of the deck because, you know, it is still, um, it is still collage and, you know, and it is very colorful. I guess I just feel like it takes the inspiration of D&D um, &D maps and D&D &D imagery, but it takes it that one step further. Like, it really elaborates on the idea, and um, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. But, like, the best part, so I love the backs, I could stare at them forever, but the best part then is that when you sort of spread them out, you get this super cool little wavy design on the sides. Oh man, and it's it's just so cool. It and um the sides are gilded and so like when you let me see if I can kind of get this to do what I want. So when you have it like this, you get the the shine and the little blue peeking through and it's just so beautiful and it reminds me of book edge painting or book four painting for a like f-o-r-e or for a i don't remember what it's called but basically it's like that old it's a very old tradition where um you have a design that is meant to be seen when the book is open and all the sides of the pages are sort of splayed out like this and it's just <laughs> it's so cool and it surprises me every time like i know it's there but i just always forget how awesome it looks. And it kind of has that on the top a little too. It's sort of, it's still interesting. You know, it's got these little stripies, but my favorite is the one on the sides where you get the, ah, oh, so good. <laughs> so good. Um, so yeah, that is the, um, Goblins and Gardens tarot deck. Fabulous backs. Next up we have the new wave tarot, which, um, this basically is the back design, although without the text. So I'll just, pop it right open. That is the back design. <laughs> and I really, really like this. Um, I love the geometric lines and I love, it's probably a little hard to see on camera. Let me see if I can focus this. Mm. Come on. All right. I don't know how well it's just going to be able to focus, but basically like these little, um, this, this, uh, Rose has like these little, um, this tiny, tiny checkerboard pattern on it. Oh my God. How do people get cameras to focus? Well, whatever it has, it has like this very tiny checkerboard pattern on it. Sorry for like forcing you to stare at a blurry thing forever, but, um, it's just like, it's really cool because it incorporates that geometric line and incorporates that pattern, but in a really subtle way. And like the, the angles here combined with the very, um, smooth 
spiraling curves of the rose just work super well. It incorporates the... Okay. <laughs> okay, so like one of my guilty pleasure shows um, is Project Runway. And there's this thing that Heidi Klum, who's one of the judges of these uh, fashion designers, always says, where she always says like, I like how you incorporated both the hard and the soft. Like, like she talks about... Um, you know, your look, it's so hard, but it is also soft. And that always bugged the crap out of me because it's like, it just feels so meaningless. <laughs> like, they're trying to say it's, it's like, it's edgy, but don't worry, a woman could still wear this. But anyway, anyway, like that's, that sort of pops into my mind of like, you have these very, um, straight line edges and then the very soft curves of the... <laughs> Of the rose, oh my god! And now I'm now I've turned into her. I love this card back because you have the hard on the soft. Like, oh my god! All right, I'm like, I'm uh, all right. Let me let me get it together a little here. Um, anyway, it's just it's so simple, but it's so well done. Here's some of the card fronts. Um, by the way, the card fronts. It's like a collage deck with a bunch of different new wave artists like musical artists um and so I feel like you you really need something that's simple but striking to complement each one of these and I think it totally does I mean I feel like the card this card back just sums up what the deck is and that's really cool and like it's seriously just so cool I would use this as a background for a zine page in fact I might just go ahead and do that at some point um really really like it uh, and then one other little thing that I want to point out about this is that the box, like I showed you, has this on the front, but then on the side it's got these little stripey things. And so I'm glad that they didn't include the stripies on the card backs themselves, but <laughs> whenever I read tarot I tend to just like leave the box, you know, on the table or, or nearby. And so I always see these little stripes just kind of, you know, out of the corner of my eye which I just, I don't know, I just really like the combination of these, of all three of these patterns together. So I guess it's kind of, like, cheaty because this is not the card back, it's card box, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I just, um, yeah, I really like it. It's not reversible, too, like, um, let me hold up two next to each other. Uh, like, it's, it's not reversible, which I kind of appreciate because I don't read refer with reversals, but it's also not to the point where it's distracting. Like sometimes when you have an, a drawing like um, that very clearly has a direction, like you have a, a figure, an animal standing up on, you know, the card back, then when you flip it over and they are upside down, then it's kind of distracting <laughs> where, you know, I, you know, I don't intentionally shuffle reversals in or anything, but every now and then, you know, they just kind of get mixed in. Um, and... I kind of prefer it when I'm not going to be, when like the image could be uh, just as um, readable if it were upright. Like if this was the upright position, it wouldn't really make me blink um, as opposed to this. There's no, there's no distinction. Like, although these are not the same as in they are not reversible, um, it's not distracting if a reversal just kind of worms its way in there. I don't know if that, you know, makes any sense, but I do appreciate that about this deck. Alrighty. The next one that I have is the Autonomic Tarot. Um, and this one, these card backs are very strange. And here they are. <laughs> um, and I guess I'll just like get it out of the way right now that these card backs do not really fully match the card fronts. And I think it's mostly in the color scheme because I think that the card backs are sort of circusy because they have these very bright uh, red and yellow. And so although they use red and yellow in the deck, it's they're not really the dominant colors. And so it's a little bit weird, I guess, that this is the card back. Um, like... I feel like it would almost be more integrated if the card back used like this black and blue uh, 
for the colors instead, or maybe red and black or something. But <laughs> funny enough, I feel like that almost, it's almost appropriate for this deck that it's so strange and, and bright and colorful because it is disorienting. And I think that this disorientation is the mindset that you want to be in when you're reading this deck, especially when you have multiple laid out and you've just got like this big swath of these swirling, strange, distorted checkerboard patterns. It's like, it's very dizzying. And I think that is what this deck needs because this whole deck is very strange and kind of poetic and this deck makes this deck doesn't make sense okay like this deck is more about um i don't know like here's the wheel of fortune and it's one of those things where it really only makes sense when you're in the right mindset where you kind of have to be in that um liminal, dreamy, disoriented state to get the most out of this deck. And so this card back really supports that. Like this, this card deck helps you get into the right mindset that you need to really read this deck. Um, and I guess that's more than you could ever ask a card back to do, right? Like it's, it's setting the mood, not just in the image like it's not it's not balancing the style of the front images necessarily or or you know it's not it's not strictly imitating the style of the front of the images on the on the actual cards themselves but it's um it complements them in that it like prepares the reader for um interacting with the deck <laughs> anyway so like just a, like a little more it's basically like it's this checkerboard pattern but it's it's very distorted and swirly and so the way that it intentionally disorients you it's like taking you out of that rational mind taking you out of that you know playing upon that human natural desire to find patterns in things but using that to its advantage to like mess with your perception <laughs> it's it's really cool i um yeah i don't yeah <laughs> you know what we'll just we'll just leave it at that um yeah so i will i guess i'll save the last one it's not exactly like saving the best for last thing but just for fun i'm gonna save the very last of my favorites for the end and for right now i'm gonna quickly go over some of my least favorite card backs um Actually, I guess before I do that, you might expect this next deck to be on my least favorites, but it's not. And so this is sort of like a defense of the card pack, and that is for the Dreaming Way Tarot. And these, this deck is sort of notorious for having card backs that people hate, and that the, the card back doesn't seem to reflect the style of the deck. So this is the deck. It's sort of... Um, fairy tale, um, very fashionable, very, um, you know, watercolor storybook kind of look. And then the card backs look like this. And I understand why a lot of people don't like this card back because it is sort of, um, it doesn't match the front of the deck very much. Uh, the backs are this kind of very um, s 60s wallpaper kind of back. Um, but I don't, they don't, don't bother me that much. It's not like it's my favorite card back ever. It's not like, oh, I totally love these card backs or I think that it's perfect for this deck, but they don't bother me that much. Like, it's fine. It's a reversible for the most part like for all intents and purposes reversible uh image and the colors i like the colors i like these greens and browns and they use these colors in the deck you have you know the same greens and browns that are spread throughout and um i don't know i don't hate it <laughs> so i just think that's kind of i i always think it's kind of funny that like 
there's a, a near universal consensus that these are ugly card backs. <laughs> like it just, every single time that I see someone mention the Dreaming Way Tarot, I'm like, oh, are they going to mention the card backs? Are they, do they hate the card backs? <laughs> um, like, I don't know, just kind of funny and interesting. But I will share some of the card backs that I actually hate. One of them is for the Brit's Third Eye Tarot, which is a sort of mm, manga-ish styled deck. Here's the fronts. I love this Knight of Cups. Um, and I got this on Make Playing Cards, and it's one of the most famous or popular decks on Make Playing Cards. Look at that Ten of Swords. Isn't that so cool? Um, so those are the fronts, and I love the fronts. Um, very pretty. <laughs> This is what the back looks like. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Like, it's not the worst thing in the, in the world. I kind of like the idea behind it of having the callback to the plaid back Rider Waite Smith. I like it. I think that the colors suit the front of the deck just fine. Like, oh, I realize I, pff, I'm showing you the same card. Um, like, it doesn't look out of place or anything for the style of the deck. It has the same type of line that's been hand, um, you know, hand-drawn. I think it was digitally drawn, but, like, hand-drawn with a sort of textured brush. Um, so it's not that. What I hate about this card back is that it's, it's slightly off. It is not symmetrical, and it's not centered. I think it's mostly not being centered that really irritates me, where, let me see if I can just hold one and hold it steady so you can really see what I'm talking about here. Um, this central diamond, it's too far to one side, which really, really bothers me. <laughs> and the diamonds are all slightly different sizes, which I don't mind that so much, but like, when they're so big and when they take up so much of the card back, it just feels really obvious and so it feels really distracting. And then you can see here, like, it's not centered vertically either, where um, there's less of this big diamond showing on the bottom than there is on the top. Um, so the whole thing just feels like it was kind of like, eh, eh, like pushed, pushed over and down a little bit. Which really bothers me. And then you can see, like, tiny little pieces of the eyes on this side, but you can't see it over here. So it's re you can really see how pulled over to one side it is. And that so bothers me, <laughs> because it's like, this pattern is fine. And I think that if the pattern were just slightly smaller, it wouldn't bother me so much. Um, or if they had kept the size of pattern, but centered it and, you know, been very in intentional about centering the the middle diamond on the card, then it wouldn't annoy me so much. Um, but as it stands, like, it really, it really does kind of annoy me, which is a shame because I do really like this deck and I feel like it probably is one of those things where if the back wasn't like this, then it probably I might get some more use in my collection. Um, you know, not that I see the backs that much and not that I think like, oh, I'd really like to use this deck. Oh, but those backs, ugh. it's just kind of like, um, one of those subtle things where when I'm thinking like, oh, what deck do I want to use? This one doesn't always pop into my head and probably part of it is because I don't like the backs. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, but yeah, which is a shame because, you know, I happen to be holding my favorite card in the deck, which is the moon card. It's so cool. It looks like um, Usagi in the front, uh, Sailor Moon. Sort of, like the silhouette just reminds me of her, and I'm sure that was intentional. And and it's got this really interesting texture, like the blacks aren't spotted black, they're drawn in. Anyway. Anyway, so that's the Brit's Third Eye Tarot, which is kind of a shame. <laughs> the next one is the New Zealand Naturally Tarot, which is a nice little poker-sized deck that I like, and the uh, it's an animal deck that features entirely animals from New Zealand, or that live in New Zealand, and 
I really like it, and it's one of those decks that I sort of, I get to learn about so many new animals from it. It's colorful, it's got really these these really interesting thick lines, like it's very up my alley in that sense. And then the backs look like this. <laughs> and like, frankly, the, the backs are, the image is fine. I don't really like the image that much because it was, it clearly, it looked like a photograph where it's been, um, mirrored so that, uh, it would be symmetrical both left to right and up and down, which kind of looks a little bit weird, but let's be honest, like the thing that really gets it is these, is the giant text. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of text on the backs of cards. I think that's not uncommon, but it doesn't bother me. I feel like as much as it bothers some people, like some people just absolutely hate it. I don't absolutely hate it. I'll sort of accept it. But these ones in particular, it's like, it's so huge. You know, the text is giant and it's in both, it's upside down, you know, because it's reversible and I don't use it reversible anyway. And so it's just like, okay, so now I get to see this big, ugly text twice. <laughs> and one of them, it's not even legible. So it, it's harder to just ignore it. Oh my gosh. And, and it's so huge. And especially the fact that these are sort of smaller cards, you know, they're poker size instead of tarot size. There's this giant text taking up all this room on the back just so bugs me. And also I feel like the colors just from the image in general don't really match with the colors on the deck. Like it feels a lot more, um, purple ish. And there really isn't that kind of color. Like you can see here, here's some of the blues that they tend to use in this deck, which is a lot more sky blue. It's a lot more on the green end of the spectrum than the purple end of the spectrum. And then you have this very purpley blue that just doesn't really work. And even in cards where they use purple, like here, you can they use purple in the stars. It just doesn't fit. Like, it's probably because it's a photograph, the colors aren't as, um, I don't know why my lighting just got yellow. <laughs> so maybe not the best time to be talking about colors. Oh, it got yellow because of this. Oh, interesting color correction. Well, anyway, the whole thing is that I feel like the the colors are not so saturated on the back as they are in here. So they look a little gray and they look a little dull and they're kind of too purpley. And it's just like, uh, I just don't like the backs at all. And I'm really sorry about it. I think that these were also a make playing cards thing, incidentally. Um, not to characterize make playing cards decks as having uh, notoriously bad backs or anything, just a coincidence, but... Anyway, yeah, the New Zealand Naturally Tarot does not have good card backs, but it is not the worst. The, uh, the, the favorites were not really in any particular order. These ones are definitely in order from least bad to most bad. Um, and if you saw my most recent tier uh, ranking video, you're going to know exactly what deck this is. It is the Mibramig Magical Tarot. And you know what? I'm just gonna jump straight into it. These are the card backs. <laughs> they have this giant square head big titty cat from the star card, which is the weirdest and ugliest shaped animal on the back of every single card. And it's huge. It takes up the whole card. I generally, you know, like I said before, where um, I don't really like it when there's a figure on the back of the card, because then if there are any reversals, it looks especially distracting. Um, I think this is plenty distracting just on its own. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's a figure. Um, and you know what? Because I didn't show it last time, I'm going to actually flip through and see if I can find the star card in all its glory so we can really... <laughs> Oh my god. So we can really ask ourselves why? Why why would anybody choose this particular figure to grace the backs of their entire deck? This is the star card. And it's even bigger on the backs. It's like it's enlarged on the back. Why? <laughs> It's so weird. 
It is so ugly. This weird shape. It's like, oh my god. It's like Jimmy Neutron sized head. And like the the body isn't even that weird. It's just like this giant square block on top of it. How is this supposed to represent hope? I have no hope. I have no hope for this deck. I have no hope for humanity when I am looking at this star card. Holy shit. It is so bad. And that's what's on the backs. And they didn't even like match the colors to to the card. Like it looks like they just color dropped from the shading on the side, where it would have made more sense, at least, if they had color dropped from this navy and used the navy on the back. But no, it's got this bad gray teal that on its own, I don't mind it as a color, but here it just like, oh my god, I gotta put this away. I can't look at it. I cannot look at it anymore. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta put it all the way back. So that, <laughs> so, that these, so that those card backs cannot haunt me anymore. Alrighty. Alrighty, so this is why I wanted to show off some of these and save one of the one of my favorite card backs for last. Just to sort of end on like a nice, happy, relaxing note where I can put that star card out of my mind and I can just I can be in a world of beautiful card backs. <laughs> and so the very last one that I have uh, is the Everyday Witch Tarot. I made this box for it. And the card backs are like this. This really cute little cat. There's a cat, I think, on every uh, card in the deck. It's got the classic pointy hat, the broom. It's... Uh, fun, it's upbeat, it's, uh, there's sort of an, uh, a word that has come up recently to describe this kind of style of, like, the, um, uh, 70s through 90s, um, wizard aesthetic, <laughs> and I think it's called whimsigoth, like, whimsical and gothic, um, and so it's with, like, the blue field and the sort of hand-drawn, um, iconographic, stars very much fits in with that and I'm I'm a fan of that um look it's sort of usually used in terms of interior design um I, I mean lately it seems to be referring to particular interior design of like brass end tables and um uh like a lot of fabrics on the walls and so it's sort of like you know I don't know, Castle Wizard's probably the best way to describe it. I'm getting into I'm getting I'm getting into it here. But just look up uh Whimsigoth if you're curious and um if you see something that looks like this, then you're in the right place. <laughs> so I just think it's really sweet. Um the funny thing is this obviously is not reversible, but because they're sort of floating here, um, that they, they don't look like they need to be anchored to anything, then this doesn't bother me at all when reversals ac accidentally get mixed in um, because, you know, space has no really, space doesn't really have direction. So whether you're upside down or right side up, it's like, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, so, so that doesn't bother me. Um, and yeah, I think it's appropriate for, for the front here. Um, the colors don't always match per se. Like these are a little bit more, um, pastel-y, watercolor-y, um, I guess they're pretty saturated, but they're not as dark. Uh, but that doesn't bother me. I just, I just really like these card backs a lot. Um, I just think they're cute. I think they're nice and they always make me smile and they just sort of remind me that like, oh yeah, tarot is fun. Tarot can be fun. And, um, yeah, so I'll just, uh, end it there of like the cute and adorable cat and we are just not going to think about the other one. <laughs> so thanks for checking this out. Reminder that it's never too late to do a VR and I will see you guys later. Bye.